Hi, I'm Kevin. This is my 2001 BMW E39 M5. It's got just a tickle of 120,000 miles on it. Welcome to Kevin's 2001 E39 M5. I've, this is the third E39 M5 that I've driven, uh, other than my own. And we're gonna see if this makes me want an aggressive exhaust system. So, let's get this startup going. Oh yes. Done. Just mainly maintenance, maintenance, and more maintenance. <laughs> Just got a new set of rod bearings in. So let's make sure we're up to temp. Yep, and we can open her up a little bit. dig a little harder for these brakes than mine, but it's probably just the pads. So considering E39 source pretty much has a monopoly on every like M5 bit of content you could possibly have, I was thinking about what can I add to this? Um, other than the fact that all of the people who own E39 M5s, as much as we like to feel like we're these sophisticated connoisseurs of heritage M cars, the reality is we're kind of like basic white bitches because we all have the same actual reason we bought this car and it's because of the BMW films <laughs> starring Madonna in Star. And I think that's really why we all own this car. Okay, am I wrong? Is, yeah, you're laughing right now because you know it's true. You know that's why you bought this car. For mods, it's got a Brittleman catback exhaust, Diamond Stage 1 suspension, which is uh, Diamond Springs on a Coney Yellow Shock. It's got an Eibach rear sway bar. Still has that somewhat numb steering feel, but that's what it is. Short shifter out of a E60 545, which in an E39 acts as a short shifter. It's got the ZHP shift knob. Oh, E60 shift lever is definitely my <laughs> number one mod in the spring because this is fantastic. Yeah, it's just that nice OEM style feel. It's got the uh, BBS CH Black Editions, half an inch wider than standard. Yeah, for tires, I'm running uh, Michelin Pilot Super Sports, 275 in the back, 245 in the front, stock tire sizes. Uh, my favorite thing about this car is that when I do go on cruises with people who have E92 M3s, I'll hear them on the DCT downshifting like three gears and I like leave it in six and just plant my foot down. And that's really fun. And it feels silly because I own both cars. But at the same time, like that's what this car is all about. People have gotten so mad that the fact that I said that an E92 M3 is a garbage GT car. And fuck you, I'm right, because it is a garbage GT car. It's too stiff, it has terrible fuel economy, it has a thimble for a fuel tank, and it has no low end grunt. Whereas this car, you get an extra couple gallons in the fuel tank, you get a couple extra miles per gallon, so I don't have to refuel every time I go somewhere. It's also soft and just relaxed. I don't, you know, you don't have to touch it. It doesn't require much input when you're on the highway. Now, the complete opposite is true on a windy back road. I need to put in an insane amount of steering input to get this car to go where I want it to go. Um, and it's a little bit more numb, which when you come from the E92 is a frightening proposition because on the one hand, you've got a car that gives you all the feedback in the world, the M3, and then you've got this nice leisurely GT car that you can't feel a whole lot and it can be a little nerve wracking. So the first time you go to turn in on this car, I think everybody shits themselves just a little bit and then you realize it's hooking up. You just have to like sacrifice the feel for what it's actually going to do. This car is a uh, anthracite gray. This color was dropped in 2002 for sterling gray, which are what most of the gray M5s are. In the US, the E39 M5 came basically fully loaded from the factory. It's got nav, it's got heated seats. The one thing I think is really bizarre about BMWs is that the uh, heating systems, you have this, if you can point to that real quick. Yeah, just. In order to like make the car warm or cold, you do have to do this. You have to move this little dial. Now, that seems really insignificant, other than the fact that down here, I'm also telling it I want you to be warm, right? That's so dumb. Why do I have to do it twice? So my poor mother, when she got her E90 M3, she was like, I'm turning the heat all the way up, but it's not on. She didn't realize she had to slide the little thing, which I don't blame her. It's stupid. You shouldn't have to slide the little thing. It's like two completely independent adjustments for the same thing. Exactly. My car has the full leather interior package, which is leather door cards, leather dash, leather sun visors, leather 
B pillar for whatever reason, and it's got the front and rear parking sensors that were an option. It does not have the M audio, which was the only other option you could get on this car. As Matt Farrow would say, how's the turning radius on this, you right? Fucking awesome. In my car, yes, uh, I do see my service engine soon light quite often. However, that service engine soon light is not like catastrophic engine failure. It's like, yeah, it's some stupid emissions thing. It's gonna be a gas cap. Now, the one thing that is actually scary about these cars is the secondary air system. So this is the one that, th if anyone was like, okay, I can get over the sensors, I can get over the vanos, I can get over this, I can get over that. The people, this is the one photo that will ruin everybody. They show them the carbon buildup when the secondary air system clogs. And that's when everyone goes, okay, I'm out. I don't want it.